Hi everybody, welcome to Speedway Motors. My name's Tim, and I'm always so glad when you can join us here in the shop and we can talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that's old school hot rod parts. Today I brought one of our uh, better, uh, most popular brake setups, and that's this Juice Lincoln style self-energizing brake setup that we sell. This thing comes fully loaded with your backing plates, your brake shoes, springs, everything you need, and it works really well if you want an old school look on your hot rod. Maybe you're running an open wheel Model A or a T-Bucket, but you just don't want the disc brake look. You're looking for something more traditional in style. This thing also works well if you've got a 44 and you're just looking to upgrade the brakes and you want something that's self-energizing. Again, this utilizes the Lincoln style backing plate which gives you a great look. The more important reason I wanted to do this video and talk a little bit today is we get a lot of questions from folks calling into our call center and they want to know how does the wide five drum work with this particular brake setup, either with our Ford spindles or an original Ford spindle. And there are a lot of reasons a guy or a gal might want to use a wide five brake drum and I brought one with me. This is actually off of one of my old cars. This is off a of 37 Ford. And you can kind of see where the wide five hub gets its name. The wide five being the studs going way out to the outer edges of the drum. And it's a really neat looking setup. And there's been a resurgence lately in people wanting to run these on their old hot rods. These were actually really popular in the days of circle track racing because the wheels were a lot stronger and they got bent up a little less when people were, were running them on the old dirt track. So uh, it's a cool setup. You might also have a, an original Ford that has a wide five drum on it and you really like the look of the original wheels but you want to update the brakes a little bit to have something that's a little more uh, gives you a little bit more stopping power and this is a perfect reason to want to do this combination too so again kind of going back to the drum this one was really grungy when I pulled it off the car but I gave it a quick cleanup in the solvent tank and uh, everything looks really good the bearing surfaces are really nice uh, the good thing is this uses all the same bearings as what an old Ford hub would use uh, just for the regular Ford Ford wide uh, regular uh, big Ford pattern I should say. If I were going to use this on a car of course I'd want to put it on a brake lathe and, and clean it up and, and uh, check it one more time but uh, for demonstration purposes it works really well. I brought the actual backing plate all put together here on this little stand to kind of show you what it looks like. I've actually put the inner bearing on here already. I didn't grease anything up. If you were building a hot rod, you'd not want to forget that important step. But uh, I'll show you how this all goes together. Before I put the drum on, I wanted to talk a little bit about the backing plate itself. And these are really nice, thick steel. They've got a nice stamping. Uh, and you'll notice that it doesn't have a fully round circle here and when you buy one of our Speedway spindles these emulate what would be a 37 to 41 Ford spindle. Uh, of course this particular spindle can be used on any Ford axle from 28 to 48 and it's going to fit uh, no problem. Uh, but the back, the round back that you see that, that emulates what a 37 to 41 car would have. And I actually have a stock spindle here too and you can kind of look how, it, how it's designed the same way. This one has the steering arm on it. Of course all the hot rodders back in the day would cut that steering arm off and use a bolt-on arm a lot of times, but at least it gives you an idea. When it comes to the backing plate, however, to utilize these you just have to take a little notch out of your spindle. And I can kind of show you where that happens. The spindle itself has plenty of meat which is good so you're not going to run into any weakness issues there but you just have to make a flat spot right across the top and I've seen people do it a lot of different ways you can take a mill and run across probably the best way but I've seen people use grinders and get a really good result too uh, you know just take off what you need just so it fits into that backing plate and I can show you that on this one kind of how we did it and it looks really nice as you can see once you get it fit down in there it's a really nice look. So without further ado, I'll kind of show you how the, the drum itself fits on and I'll just kind of carefully slip it on here and put all the bearings in. Again, outer bearing, I'm not going to grease it up or anything. And when you buy a set of spindles, we also have all the nuts and washers and bearings as separate part numbers if you need them. But as you can see, it doesn't take much to get that thing looking good. And then, uh, of course, what I love the most about old Ford hubs and old, old Ford wide five drums like this is the screw-on grease cap, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so there you have it. 
And once you have that on your car, you're good to go. Of course, it's all greased up. It'll give you years of, of good service and good braking, and, and that self-energizing setup's going to work really well on your car, too. You'll notice a big difference. So there you have it, folks. I hope that helps you out if you're thinking about doing this and need a more reliable brake on your car. But if you have any questions, give us a call. We've got a great group of techs on staff here that are happy to answer all of your questions. You know, you can check us out on YouTube or visit our website where you can ask questions directly there, too. So until next time, folks, thanks so much for visiting with us, and we'll see you next time.